So this is what you look like after being on a cruise or smiling. What is cruising like in a post-COVID world? Cruises are starting to resume in some markets around the world and the UK is leading the way. So I spoke to my friend Emma from Emma Cruises to find out what her first cruise was like in the UK market. Hi, I'm Chris Frame. I write maritime history books and lecture aboard cruise ships about maritime history. I also make YouTube videos on the topics of maritime history and cruising. If that sounds like the sort of thing you're interested in, please feel free to subscribe. Your cruise experience generally starts with embarkation, and it's a time of great anticipation. I mean, the ship's right there, you can see it, and all you need to do is get through check-in, security, and then put up with what can sometimes be a really long wait. But with COVID restrictions and testing, many people are asking what kind of impact that's had on the embarkation process. So it's mostly the same process. There's just a few extra stages that you have to go through. For me, I did, I did the first cruise from the UK, a brand new cruise ship. You know, it was very, very new and it took about an hour and a half, mm -hmm. which I don't think was too bad considering it was the first cruise back. But since then, I think it's got a lot faster. People are getting on in under an hour. Basically, the only extra steps are they're really checking travel insurance to make sure you have the right travel insurance. They right. will not let you anywhere near the cruise if you don't, which I think, I think that's a good thing. That should have been a thing anyway, really. And then you have on the MSC cruise I took, everybody got a COVID test. So it was just the extra stage of, you know, swab up the nose, sit down, wait till they call your number and then and then board the ship. But really that added maybe 20 minutes to the whole process. Okay. But it was very kind of like, if it was an hour and a half one line, it would have been very different. But you could see you were making progress. It was like 15 minutes here, 15 minutes to the next thing. So I thought it was I thought it was pretty good, actually. I was expecting chaos for the mm. first cruise, to be honest, but it was pretty good. So embarkation sounds bearable, well, at least from Emma's point of view. But what about the food and meals on board the ship? Meals and food has changed a lot in recent years, particularly during the cruise boom of the 2000s. There's a lot more choice now than what you would have on the old ocean liners, with more specialty dining, extra restaurants, and the ever-expanding buffet. But with COVID-19 restrictions, People have been asking, what is the food experience like on board the ship? So in the main restaurants, it'll be the same, the same kind of setup in the restaurants. It will just be, you know, every other table will be, don't sit people here. So you just get more space. I liked having the menus on your phone. So you just scan a QR code, you see the menus on your phone. If you need a paper menu, you can still get them and plenty of people did. But I much preferred that. On the MSC cruise, you can see the menus I think for the whole cruise. So I was working out, oh, tomorrow's dinner is this. Don't fancy that. I'm going to go here instead. And I thought that was good. But apart from that, you know, they still, you still order with a waiter. They still bring you your food. The food is the same. It's not really that different. The buffet is a bit different, but I, I think it's better. Got to be so honest. How does the buffet work? So on MSC, they make sure you wash your hands. And I mean, make sure you wash your hands. They should have always been doing anyway, I think. And then there is a one-way system. They'll hand you a tray on MSC with your knife and fork on it. You go around and you just say, can I have some of those potatoes, please? And they just hand you whatever you want on a plate over the top. So at no point do you touch anything. You can't breathe on anything. And I think I think that's much better. I wish it was mm. always like that. It does slow down things a little, a little yeah. bit. And also with a one-way system, not everyone is going to pay attention to that. They did quite well on my cruise, but I don't know if that will be in place, you know, long term. Mm. But I would be quite happy if it, if it stayed how it was on my cruise, because I don't want anyone kind of sneezing on my food and touching the tongs. So, yeah. yeah. Another joy of the cruise experience is the entertainment on board. But being entertained on an ocean voyage isn't something that's been there since the early days of cruising. In fact, in the era of the ocean liners as well as on board the early cruise ships, this was something that wasn't really heard of. Passengers used to meet on the first or second day out from the port of embarkation and arrange a committee and organize the entertainment themselves. There were very few cruise staff on board ships, if any at all. And while the entertainment organized by the passengers might have been limited to musical recitals or egg and spoon relays, Today, we expect to be entertained on board our ship and we expect it to be put on for us. And this entertainment can range from rock climbing to roller coasters, swimming pools to shows in the large show lands on board the ship. Now, I'm glad to say that things haven't reverted back to the days of old and technology has stepped in to help make entertainment possible. So on MSC, you have to book and you do it kind of on your phone on the app. 
I've never had any situation where I couldn't book, even if I just showed up and, and booked, there's always space. But yeah, it would just be, you know, two seats and then two don't sit here seats and then two seats and two don't sit here. If you're like a group of three, it's fine as long as you have space between you and, and the other people. The idea isn't like you've got to have your kids sat over there to make a space. You just have to stay away kind of from everybody else. But on MSC, you actually have to wear your mask when you're in the, in the theatre and I, I don't think they made that very clear. And I don't think people thought that that's what it would be like. Because if you're sat down in a bar, you're sat down in a restaurant, you don't have to wear your mask. But in the theatre, you do. Here in the UK, it's exactly the same as it was on this cruise. So I went to the theatre on land. On, mm. on land, I actually went out on land recently. And you had to wear your mask in the theatre. And there were seats that were blocked off. And yeah. I'm just so used to that. So everyone followed the rules. I mean, everyone who was on that cruise wanted to be on that cruise. And I suppose the controversial question is, how safe does it feel on board? No, it hadn't crossed my mind at all. I feel, I honestly, going on that cruise ship, they had even cleaned the remote control and put it in its own little paper bag for you. Like, that's how sanitized everything was. And compared to, you know, just going to a restaurant here, going out on land... You have no you have no idea that it's been clean to the standard of the cruise ship and everybody either was fully vaccinated or two tests so you're not going to get that on land so I, I didn't didn't worry about anything so what's the verdict how is cruising today compared to pre-covid yeah i mean it was exactly the same everything you wanted to do was there it was open it was just when you go back to the buffet for the second time you just put your mask on walk over there and walk back like I never missed out on anything. The shows were still there. I don't mind wearing a mask. I really don't yeah. mind. Um, and having more space between me and other people, like, that's that's fine. Like, I don't mind if at dinner all the tables near me are closed off and then there's more people. Everything I would normally do on a cruise was on there. The things that were open were, were pretty much full. So yeah. I never kind of – you never sat there and were like, where is everybody? Because it was just everybody was in – you know, this, the same kind of places. Everything was open, but I think the kind of opening times were, were smaller because mm. you'd have like an hour for the ropes course, then it will close because they want everybody to go kind of at the same time. So mm. honestly, I like, I think I, I knew it was a good cruise. I came back and I'm like, wow, the cruise was really good. So it sounds like Emma had a great time. Obviously not many people have had much of an opportunity to go cruising yet, but if you have been to sea this year, please let me know what you thought of your cruise in the comments below. For those of you who are in countries like Australia or New Zealand or other places where cruising is still banned, I feel you. I understand what it's like and the closest we're going to come to a cruise is probably playing with our model ships, the QE2. In fact, if you're interested in the QE2, you can check out a video I made of a tour of the QE2 in the description box below or in the info card up here. Thanks so much for joining me and until next time, I hope to see you on board if we're ever allowed to travel again from Australia. Oh, either way. I mm, feel like I need to go to Dubai now, revisit my old friend. What am I supposed to be saying? What is cruising like in this post-COVID world? Now what? I've forgotten everything I was supposed to say. Hi, I'm Chris Frame. I make <laughs> cake. I'm the king of the world.